My wife seems to have a new love interest. A while back, she went to a meeting with an old classmate and ended up staying out all night. Later, she explained that she got drunk and spent the night at her best friend's house. But the problem is, her best friend is not her classmate at all, right? Since then, she is always absent-minded at home. The corner of her mouth is always in a smile that seems to be there. Especially, she always loved to hold the cell phone, the long nails tapping the keyboard. Then she would happily throw the phone away and toss and turn on the bed. I tried to take a look at her cell phone, but she immediately became furious. Her face was cold as ice, as if I'd made some unforgivable mistake. Can we have some privacy? I quickly apologized and patiently coaxed her. But she was still full of displeasure and shoot me into the living room. I stood outside the door, thinking how to apologize and win back my wife's heart. But a strange voice came from the soundless door. "Honey, I haven't gotten my period yet. You don't think I'm pregnant, do you?" I was bewildered. Lately, my wife not only especially rejected my intimate contact, she also always finds excuses to say that she's not feeling well, so that I can go sleep on the sofa. Now she is actually saying that she hasn't had her period for several days. If you're pregnant, give birth. I can afford to support you and the baby as long as you want. A greasy middle-aged man's voice. How about a hundred thousand dollars plus a house, enough to support you and the child, right? Bugger, I'm not the kind of person who only looks at money. I'm with you because of my feelings. Then she responded to the man daintily. The two of them were flirting back and forth on an unbearable scale. I stood in front of the door and felt like I was struck by lightning. The voice was also familiar to me. It was Tom, my wife's classmate and ex-boyfriend. It is said that Tom is a rich boy. His family has more money than he can count. When my wife was young, she fell in love with him, and in the end, because my wife forced her to marry and Tom refused to marry, they two broke up. Later. She met me through a blind date. We fell in love at first sight and soon got married. Married life is not great wealth, but it is also considered happy and fulfilling. But now she seems to be having an affair. Oops. My status as a second wife. You don't mind me. A petulant tone floated out from the room. The flame in my heart could no longer be held down, and I violently kicked the door open with one foot. Aisha, what are you babbling about? A trace of panic swept across my wife's face when she saw my sudden appearance. But soon, her expression turned into utter contempt and disdain. It was obvious that she scoffed at me. She hung up the phone, not even willing to give me a look. At a divorce, I'm pregnant with Tom's baby. My wife said coldly. Tom promised her a house and car and a hundred thousand dollars in compensation once the baby was born. I was so angry, my eyes turned red. But tried to salvage the situation. I begged her in a low voice to give up the baby and let's start over. I grew up as an obedient and honest man, and my wife was my first love, and my parents were happy with her. I didn't want to destroy our happy family, but Aisha's face sank, and she opened her mouth to scold. Following you, what good life can I have? Your parents also have a poor life. Don't block my way of wealth. Before I could finish my words. She changed her clothes, picked up her bag, and left without looking back. A loser like you doesn't deserve to be with me. These words pierced my heart with the slam of the door. I sat all day in the living room all night with it, my hair turning gray. What I thought was happy and fulfilling became shattered overnight. When I called my parents to tell them, they too were teary-eyed. Son, we can't give in any more. Get divorced. My parents' voices were filled with sadness as they slowly recalled all the aggravations I had experienced since Aisha and I got married. I felt very sad. Originally, I thought it was my tolerance alone, but I didn't realize it was our family's tolerance. My parents' words woke me up like a dream. It turned out that Aisha not only treated me badly, but also lost her temper with her parents. They had been holding back for the sake of my marital happiness. They were so accommodating to Aisha that I mistakenly thought she was a filial and generous person, and they loved her dearly. I didn't realize that it was all their endurance. Their original seemingly good life uncovered the disguise. The truth is so bad. Let's break up in that small store filled with the aroma of coffee.
I faced Aisha's aggressive air and decided not to hold back. I nodded my head and agreed to her proposal for divorce on the condition that she could not take away my real estate and bank deposits. Since I got married, I have been a hard worker, not daring to slack off in the slightest. As for the house, it was bought in full by my parents before the marriage. Your little bit of money, and you still consider it a treasure? Aisha's words were still as snarky as ever. I just laughed contemptuously and didn't respond. After all, that little bit of money was also something I worked hard to earn, wasn't it? Do I have to trade it in by having children, like you? Since I had decided to get a divorce, my family and I could no longer give in without a bottom line. Without hesitation, I snapped back. Actually, more because of the anger of being betrayed. Elsa's eyes widened as she stared at me angrily, but she couldn't say anything in retort. At that moment, a greasy man in a large red pant leather jacket approached. Aisha rose from the couch in surprise. Honey, didn't I tell you not to pick me up? Aisha looked at me provocatively with a smug look in her eyes as she spoke. Just have the driver pick me up. Aisha was snuggled in Tom's arms, and the picture was unbearable to look at. In my opinion, Tom's stomach was almost as big as a pregnant woman's, his mouth full of gum chewing yellow teeth. I really don't know how Elsa endured. How did the woman I once loved so much suddenly become so bad? That signed the agreement. I no longer paid attention to Aisha's provocation. Looking at the woman I once loved dearly in this state now, I naturally have mixed feelings in my heart. But if you don't look for trouble, trouble will find you. Tom sat her down, holding his stomach, and spoke with a big grin, saying, "You're a Howard, aren't you?" I was filled with disgust and just answered coldly. Tom smiled even more rudely. "You don't have to come to work tomorrow. You're fired." Looking at Tom and Elsa's self-congratulatory look, I was sick to my stomach. I'm your boss. Ha 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 ha. Unexpected, isn't it? Your daughter-in-law is now mine, and you don't even have a job. If you get down on your knees and beg for forgiveness now, I might consider it. Ah,、uh, if you want justice, I'll have mercy and not fire you. Elsa waxed Tom shyly. Tom, honey, what are you talking about? I was expressionless, calmly watching the two of them. Howard, I'm going to bring you down as easy as crushing a small ant. Ha 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 ha. Tom's laughter was extraordinarily harsh. Even if you don't fire me, I'll resign of my own accord. Maybe I wasn't crying and begging Tom to give me another job. The pair of dogs looked quite surprised. Aisha's eyes were glazed over, and she couldn't stop sizing me up. You're quitting. It's not like you're turning to begging, is it? I held back my anger and raised an eyebrow. My hand under the table bobbed into a fist. You think the new boyfriend you found is reliable, Aisha? You're too simple. There are eight other women like you outside of Tom, and you're only the ninth. After saying this, I stood up and left without a trace of attachment. I'm not kidding. What kind of person Tom is? Everyone in the circle knows clearly. Probably only Elsa still had money fantasies about him. Last month. A certain ex-girlfriend of Tom's from college also staged a play to run away with the child. Supposedly, the two had accidentally had a child on a whim in college. The woman raised the child alone until she was seven or eight years old and was desperate, which is when she approached Tom. She didn't want the child, just the money. After taking the money, she threw the child to Tom. Tom didn't care and continued to raise it. With the first example. Overnight appeared several women with children to find Tom. Tom became a father countless times in this way. I wanted to tell this to Elsa as gossip, but I didn't expect Elsa to give me this first. I was caught off guard. Forget it. Since Elsa is willing to be a nameless mistress, she is willing to be a stepmother. So let her be. Tom's family is so rich, and there is no lack of money to support women and children. After I left my job. I nodded my head and agreed to that old classmate Stephen, who had been contacting me and wanted to start a business from scratch. At a drinking party, I poured out to him the bitterness of this time. Stephen didn't laugh at me. His pensive look seemed especially reliable. He urged me to start a business together again, and this time I nodded my head. At first, with Aisha, I always felt that mediocrity was happiness. Nor was I willing to take the risk of starting a business. But now, 
After experiencing so much, my thoughts have changed. I've decided to make my own way. Our new company competes with Tom's Group, and there's quite a bit of overlap in business. One time, I was talking business with a client at a restaurant. Don, who was probably there to meet a client, caught a glimpse of me. His fat body, with a big gold chain hanging around his neck, with his yellow teeth, it was a perfect match. Elsa followed him, covered in jewelry and wearing a wide ultra short skirt, very eye catching. Only the slit of that skirt is too short. The slightest movement, the surrounding people can't have a clear view. He walked into the private room, sug, making the room smoky. The client frowned involuntarily as well. Obviously, Tom was not a competent businessman. He couldn't even do the most basic of reading people. Ew, Howard, quit your job to do this. I didn't bother with him. I didn't even look at him. I know. The more you talk to him, the more he gets, and the more he got, the more I couldn't stand him. Elsa was all dressed up and stirring up trouble. What future can a person like him have? Uh, also barely makes a subsistence, which can be compared to you. Tom was overjoyed, and his short, thick hand slapped and pinched on Aisha's butt, which was really hot. David, think about it. Our company is just starting out, but the business is still very secure. I looked at the client with a smile on my face. My biggest worry is to be robbed of business by Tom, as expected. Tom spat disdainfully and squinted at David. If you dare to sign with this kid, you won't be able to talk about our company's business. Our company doesn't sign contracts with poor people with no vision. Tom's eyes turned up white with contempt. David, our company accepts your choice on merit. I smiled while patiently speaking to David. David pondered for a moment and then said directly to me, "Let's sign the contract directly." Tom doesn't seem to like me as a client. Tom looked like he was taken aback and even more angry. He couldn't help but drop the glass in his hand. Splat! The shard splattered and scratched Aisha's bare thigh. The wound was not small, and blood flowed out. Aisha screamed, but was dazed by Tom's slap. What are you screaming for? Did I tell you to scream? There was chaos outside the door, but it was none of my business. I smiled and nodded, my heart filled with the joy of success. Completely ignoring the enraged Tom behind me, and not caring about the injured Aisha. In the past, when Aisha had a small injury, I would be very nervous. This is also the reason why she suspected me of being morally and unmanly. At that time, I didn't know that she liked such a man. What a manly man! You think you can win me over by grabbing a client? Tom's sneering voice sounded behind me, like an echo left behind after sending David away. I wasn't going to bother with him and was going to turn around and leave. Care about your wife sometime. Aisha's thigh was stained with a shocking patch of blood. Aisha was in tears, but Tom was oblivious and didn't even bother to give her a look. He blocked in front of me and pointed at my nose and cursed. "You're wearing a cool coat, aren't you? Your wife is begging me to take in." I frowned for a moment and actually sympathized with Aisha a little. This is the man you wanted to marry in such a hurry. He won't even look you in the eye. Will he give you any respect? Is this the happiness you dreamed of? Aisha's sobs continued. Perhaps she would rather cry in this atmosphere than share a laugh with me. I bowed my head and finally spoke. Competition between companies is a family affair. I don't understand what you're talking about. Tom was on fire, and he pushed me hard. I didn't expect it and stumbled back a few steps. Do you believe I can make it impossible for you to hang around here? I'll clean up your little company as easy as crushing an ant. I clenched my teeth and didn't say anything back. I knew that I was perfectly capable of not holding back and just fucking with him. But I'm not only representing myself now, but also my company, the shareholders behind the company. I can let down the brothers who fought with me because of a momentary impulse. Don, please watch your words and behavior. Tom saw that I didn't have much of a reaction and became even more arrogant. Are you still a man? Your wife has run away, and you can still tolerate it. Everyone, look, this guy is a first-class ninja turtle. After saying that, he laughed loudly and waved his hand to the waiters, not caring at all about the gazes of the bystanders. As if I didn't hear his provocation, I walked away with my chest out. I wanted to keep the last of my dignity, but in my heart, 
I had already sworn that sooner or later, I would get it back from you, Tom. Since the time the customer made a big fuss, Tom is like being possessed by a ghost. Dad, with my company, we're not a vegetarian, but we are still forced into a corner. The whole company down scenes of people, all sad face, like being frosted like, my heart that guilt all, because of my personal affairs, the company dragged into the quagmire, for a moment, I even thought of quitting the stage, but my buddy, Steven, shoot me up over and over again, he said, it's okay, how can a startup not go through some storms, it wasn't melodramatic, but it was like a warm current that warmed my anxious heart, he also said, grow quickly through adversity. I worked day and night on research and development like chicken blood. My co-workers were all as tired as pandas, with dark circles under their eyes. Finally, we came up with a competitive new product. I was so excited that I immediately started to prepare for the launch of the new product. I knew that once this product was unveiled, our company would immediately turn around and become the new star of the industry. Those hard days of pulling in customers were gone. In the industry benchmark enterprise seminar, I represent our company put forward new concepts, new ideas, down. The old geezer was naturally present. When I gushingly introduced our company's new products, Tom suddenly made a small move. Although I was a little prepared, but I did not expect him to be so calm. He said, guys, I have a big happy occasion. This weekend, I'm going to marry my new daughter-in-law. So everyone must come and support me. There was silence in the meeting room. Tom added another sentence. This one on the stage. I say, although we are peers and ex-husbands, you should not come. When everyone heard this, they first frowned, then started whispering again. I was a bit confused. Such an important occasion. Tom even mentioned this kind of personal matter. Think about those days when I stayed up late and worked overtime to develop new products. Think about those unfailing brothers and sisters in the company encouraging each other. Think about Tom's increasingly excessive bullying. Think about Elsa's superior eyes. The one who started it all was Tom. All my hard work was about to be ruined by him. My blood rushed up for a moment and I almost rushed to Tom. Calm down. It was Stephen. Stephen pulled me back and whispered in my ear. He did it on purpose to provoke you. I came to my senses in a flash, though I was still a little confused. I chose to leave the scene in the hands of the ever-articulate Stephen. Stephen straightened his clothes and, seeing that I had left, began his performance. He said, Tom, you are being generous with this rat-picking treat. Tom blushed and hurriedly tried to gag Stephen. Stephen, don't say that. I will definitely send you an invitation. Stephen was a famous rich second generation in the circle. The only son of an industry bay quick. Even Tom had to give him some face. Stephen said coldly, Tom, I wouldn't dare to go. I'm afraid my girlfriend will be pried away by you. Tom, this person, always had an unbeatable look. And when he ran into Stephen's gloomy face, his face couldn't hang on. A champion, you softy, who can even look after your daughter-in-law? What future can the company have by handing out with this kind of person? Tom's face sank and his voice raised an octave, but Stephen looked unusually calm. With the likes of Tom, who likes to meddle in other people's families, it's naturally difficult for us normal people to understand. Tom's taste is really special. In the future, you have to keep a good eye on your own family. Otherwise, one day Tom falls down, that love to climb the high branch of the daughter-in-law can do you. After saying this, Stephen laughed out loud. Those people in the meeting place who saw the wind steer the helm, at the sight of Stephen and Tom's tit for tat, immediately began to choose a side. Those who stood on Stephen's side also followed and laughed out loud. Tom's face turned blue, and he flung his sleeves up and left. After I calmed down, I went back to the ballroom to find Stephen. I was worried that he would do something irreparable by standing up for me. But when I found him, he was busy eating strawberry cupcakes. Stephen mumbled something as he stuffed the cake into his mouth. I looked helpless. Can you just finish eating? Stephen took a slow sip of sweet water and finished the last bite of cake. I said, he's done. I was a little confused. Who's finished? Done. Yeah, his wife, your ex-wife. 
is pregnant with an unlucky child that will suck the good luck out of everyone around her. Stephen's words sounded a bit unhelpful. I thought he was saying it out of the goodness of his heart, casually to comfort me, so I didn't react too much. Hey, you don't believe me. It's true, his company is going down too, and his dad is dying. As for the wife, there's going to be a complete end to the one thing she cares about most. Looking at Stephen's look of conviction, I also began to beat my heart for a time. My heart is in turmoil. My ex-wife gave me harm. Tom's insults. Ace, oh, were my motivation in the dead of night. But, undeniably, they also brought me irreparable harm. At the beginning of the new year, Elsa was blessed with a sturdy little one. Tom was busy organizing his son's 100-day feast with Klee and Klee. He went around bragging about his fat kid, not forgetting to stomp on my feeble ex-wife in the process. That's me. Even I was on the guest list for Thompson's 100th day party. By then, Stephen and I's company was no longer a fledgling startup. Instead, it was a pioneer of innovation in the industry. I became a well-known leader in the industry. Stephen insisted that I come along to Thompson's 100th birthday party. He invited Stephen and me with great fanfare, as if he wanted to make a good show of it. Today, I'm not the disillusioned man who was bent on making a name for himself just for a breath of fresh air. Now I have a career I love. My parents are in good health, and my brothers, who have been through thick and thin together, share the glory. Tom's small actions. I have long been out of sight, but Tom is not. He has been harboring a grudge, trying to push us out of the business. I know that in his mind. We don't deserve to compete with him for resources, not to mention Stephen's pension for going toe to toe with him in public. Stephen and Tom form a bond, and the two of them didn't like each other. They fought to the death in the business world and attacked and suppressed each other in social situations. Taking the opportunity of the 100th day feast, Stephen planned to take a good satirical look at Tom. Of course, he also brought me along. This time. The 100th day banquet was organized extremely luxuriously. Tom's child enjoyed a rare treat. I stood quietly in the corner, next to next to Stephen, who was eating a strawberry cupcake. Why else do you think we were hiding in the corner? I smiled helplessly and was about to say something. Suddenly, Tom's voice came from the field. Thank you for coming to my son's party. Everyone enjoyed the food and wine bar. I didn't bother. Thinking that maybe I could leave early, Ben, a dazzling light suddenly shone on my head. I was a little surprised. Tom came toward me in a full sense of humor. A special thanks goes to good buddy Howard. Thanks to Howard's generosity for letting me have his wife, Elsa, who was holding the baby behind her, was pale. Hearing this was even more shaky. Almost falling over, it seemed she was not having a good time. Next to her was Tom's mother. With a mean face and full of beads, seeing that Elsa was about to fall, she grabbed the child, completely ignoring the child's mother. Tom's words undoubtedly dropped a heavy bomb in the middle of the crowd at the villa. I usually keep a low profile and my whereabouts secret. The scandalous events of my downfall received little attention. The tabloid reporter that Tom had hired with a lot of money took a wild shot at me and seemed to even have an explosive headline in mind. I rushed to Tom in a single bound. My body stiffening. Tom's face was still sickening, and I couldn't help but raise my hand. I waved and gave Tom a quick hug. It was only polite, but I felt a little sick to my stomach. Despite my discomfort, I congratulated Tom with a big smile on my face. Congratulations! Tom suddenly frowned. I let go of him, smiled slightly, and whispered, "You didn't think I was going to beat you up, did you?" I gently patted the non-existent dust from my body, as if reluctantly. I can't thank you enough for taking in my tricky troubles in the first place, Tom. And now I am happy to see you two so in love. But I pretended to be a little embarrassed, hesitating to continue. I just suddenly stood up, cut through the crowd, and grabbed me by the collar. But what? You tell me. Elsa's shrill voice cut through the quiet. Tom's father blanched and quietly signaled the security guard next to him to pull Aisha away from him, not giving any face at all. Then he politely extended his hand again, as if trying to laugh it off. 
Stephen came over unhurriedly and casually blocked Tom's father's outstretched hand. The old fox's face looked a little embarrassed, but quickly returned to normal. It doesn't look too auspicious for the little guy to be red-faced and have a face as big as a plate. Stephen said bluntly as he looked at Tom's son. It had to be said that, superstitions aside, the boy did look a bit unlucky. It was just more or less embarrassing to be pointed out so directly by Stephen. Here, Tom was so angry that he wanted to rush up and hit Stephen, but was stopped by his own father. This friend, my son, is indisputable. Much offense. Today's banquet is for my grandson. If there is any offense, you can leave on your own. No need to take it out on the child. The child is innocent. The old fox took the moral high ground in a few words. Stephen calmed me with a look and then took over. Okay, we'll take our leave then. Except Tom, the kid is a downer. I might warn you. If you want to go deeper in the future, come see my brother Howard. Even the best-tempered man can get a little hot under the collar. I never believed in that. Don't worry about it. Tom's father's face stiffened. Don't bother. See them off. I always felt that Stephen was purposely trying to upset Tom before saying that the newest baby in his family was a Danner. Until Tom and his dad came to visit in person, as soon as they stepped into the office, Tom's dad struck a pose. He kicked Tom to his knees, and Tom's beer belly shook with a thud. Mister Howard, we really have the eyes not to recognize the mountain. Offended you? Please be generous. I was confused. I cannot figure out what this father and son are playing the ghost idea. Don, you are too polite. We have nothing to do with each other. There is no offense. When Tom heard my words, his eyes were full of anger, and he directly burned at me. If Tom really had superpowers, I guess I would have hung up a long time ago. Howard, don't pretend. I was even more confused. Two of you, I still have something on my side, so I won't see you off. Tom was even more pressed this time. He stood up in a mischievous manner, pointed at my nose, and started to swear. As soon as his emotions came up, he even rushed to me and slammed my desk. Said, "Is it you who found someone to fix our company, Howard? I'm not finished with you." I was so scared by him. After all, with this kind of rotten people, the bad luck is still their own. I didn't move and stepped back as far as I could from this cranky Tom. Sap, Tom's dad rushed forward and slapped Tom across the face. Shut the fuck up! After listening to Tom's crazy talk, I figured out what was going on. It turned out that since the banquet, Tom's company's partners, as if they had discussed the same thing, one after another to refund the order. Some customers are even willing to pay liquidated damages, but also want to take the initiative to breach the contract. In order to no longer cooperate with Tom, Tom's father was anxious to see his hard-earned fortune to be lost by his son. A big old man also cannot stand it. Remembering Stephen's words that I was behind the trick, he brought his son here to make amends. Don, you've got it all wrong. I'm not that bored, nor am I that capable of tripping up your company. Your son's character is well known in the industry, so it's better to find out more from yourself. After saying that. I signaled my assistant to send off the guests, but Tom's father's face sank, and he began to threaten me in a low voice. Howard, you are not going to let our family go. Doing things to leave a threat. Later to meet Ah Howard, you are too young to understand the rules of the mall. I almost laughed out loud at that. You still want to threaten me even at this point? What a family! Seeing that I was still not moved, Tom's dad dragged Tom away before leaving. He also did not forget to put down harsh words. Howard, you wait for me. Just after sending Tom's father and son out the door, Stephen stormed in with all the wind and fire. Hey, I told you so, didn't I? I couldn't help but shake a few things up inside. Are you really that serious? Stephen replied with an exaggerated look on his face. I would never joke about this. I stared intently at Stephen. Stephen looked a little uncomfortable. What are you doing? How do you know that kid is a downer? Stephen was quiet for a little while. I'm not sure you'll believe it, but I can see the unlucky index in everyone. I felt that my perception was a bit upside down, but Stephen said it was not a good idea to go deeper into the matter, so I didn't pursue it any further.
After Tom and his father came to the door to apologize, I encountered something even more ridiculous. Elsa, she actually came to my door. How did Elsa find out about my newly moved mansion? It was a big mansion that I had just replaced. She stood in the doorway, dressed in pitifully little clothing and shivering from the cold. As soon as she saw me, her eyes immediately got teary. I was wrong. There, can you forgive me? I had an indescribable feeling in my heart. You and Tom's wedding is done and the baby is born. It's not quite right to call me darling now, is it? Aisha was so anxious that she tried to jump into my arms. I dodged and she didn't stand still, falling on her face. Aisha frowned, then sat her day on the ground and cried. I really know I'm wrong. Why are you so cruel and refuse to forgive me? Eh, uh, I really want to start over with you. Please forgive me. My mind went blank. For a moment, I couldn't tell if she was really stupid or pretending to be. Are you kidding? Aisha didn't say anything as she stood up and ripped the shirt off her shoulders. A purple and black scar was immediately revealed. Aisha's skin was white, and the scar looked especially hideous. Like a monster with teeth and claws. Tom hit me. I can't take it anymore. Honey, you have a successful career now. You'll be happy with me. I was really wrong before. I finally realized that Elsa meant what she said. She really wanted to come back. What scares me the most is that after all the excesses she's done and all the hurtful things she said to me, she still wanted to come back. I'm not angry. I just feel sorry for her. She's like a vine clinging to a man, always looking for a toilet trunk so she can climb higher to see the view. She can stay away from men and is constantly picking and choosing. To her, cheating is not something to be ashamed of. Then finding her ex and making up is even less so. She takes it for granted that I should accept her unconditionally and be good to her. She has no moral compass and doesn't deserve my anger over her. You go away. I'm not going to be with you anymore. If you are suffering from domestic violence, you can seek legal assistance. As for me, Aisha, I've done my best by not falling on my sword. After saying all that, I felt a sense of relief, like I'd let go of a burden that had been weighing me down for so long. I released it. That's why it was so easy. As I left, Aisha was still sobbing behind me. This time I didn't look back, but notified the property. The security in this neighborhood was no joke. From then on, it was impossible for Aisha to appear in front of my door without my permission. As for Aisha's future, I don't care and I don't want to interface. Our destiny is over. This world is one long soap opera. I had thought that a character like Elsa was dramatic enough, but when I heard that Tom's father had kicked him out of the house, the drama was so bloody that it was beyond my imagination. Tom's father, in fact, was barren, but in order to save face, after discussing with his wife, he adopted his wife's brother's child, the child as his own flesh and blood to raise. This child is Tom, businessman, the interests of the first. This is not a joke. Seeing his own hard-earned kingdom is about to collapse. Plus, the son who is not good enough to make the middle-aged himself lose face. I don't want such a son. In short, in order to save his own career, Tom became a victim. As for Tom himself, he was completely devastated. He never thought that his company would decline so quickly. What's more, he never thought that he was not his own. Twenty to thirty years of father and son love, but cannot compare to a declining company. Overnight. Tom lost everything, the once drunken friends no longer look at him in the eye, and the women who used to look at him have also left him. At this point, he remembered his son, just when he was hopeful that Elsa and his son could give him some comfort. Elsa ran away, and left behind a shocking truth. The son was not Tom's, seeing that there is no possibility of Tom turning over again. Elsa leaves without hesitation, before leaving. Remembering Tom's torment and also deciding not to let him have a good time, she revealed this shocking secret. At that time, I often traveled on business, not at home. She and other men day and night fling around. Don was just a scapegoat. Don, this guy was out of his mind, or rather, he was that close to losing his mind completely. He came into my office with a knife in his hand, as if he wanted to kill me. His eyes were red, as if they were dripping blood, and he stared at me with a look that seemed to say, "Today it's either you or me." 
but my company is not a vegetarian. Security measures are all in place. Besides, that Tom guy, long-term smoking and drinking, his body has long been collapsed. How can he still have the strength to fight with me? He yelled, "It's all your fault. Without you, I'm still the rich son of a rich family. What are you? Go to hell, all of you. Go to hell." Looking at his crazy look, I felt that pain in my heart. Don, do you still remember those scenes where you humiliated me? Do you still remember? Tom laughed that cocky laugh. That was your own fault. You deserve to be stepped on by me. What right does a small character like you have to surpass me? What right? It was clear as day to me that Tom's spirit was on the verge of breaking. I didn't want to get into his mess and get myself in a foul mess as well. With a flick of my hand, the security guards took Tom to the police station. Attempted willful injury was a charge that would be enough to keep him in a cell for quite some time. But I still underestimated Tom's shamelessness. Since he was kicked out of Tom's family, those he had hurt had fallen on their swords. A litany of crimes have been revealed, including willful injury. He weighs his crimes and feels hopeless for the rest of his life, and finds it hard to accept. In the end, he chose to betray his father, the man who raised him and then drove him from his home, in order to alleviate his guilt. He reported his family's company for tax evasion and bribing officials. Tom's father was sent to prison as a result. I don't think he's innocent, even though he didn't go after me directly. But he had been conniving and letting Tom run the mark. Having gotten to this point, he's had it coming. I still can't figure out if that unlucky mess at Tom's house was a result of too many of their own sins, or if it was the result of their unlucky kid pushing the envelope. However. As Stephen said, there is no point in pursuing this. Now I myself is mixed with the wind and prosperity. The company scale day by day bigger and bigger. It seems that I have also met the person of my destiny. She is my business partner. We in the daily cooperation gradually sparks. At my age, love comes late, but it is also intoxicating. One time, I embarked on a trip to New York City for my company's business. New York City was a place of great splendor. That day, the client host led us to the most famous local casino. Set to talk about business, my heart is actually not very happy. But the face cannot pass; can only be tough to go. The heart only hope for an early end. I did not expect to play to half. The customer is excited. Even called a team of girls. I casually glanced at the crowd. Unexpectedly, saw Aisha. Aisha's eyes were deep set, and her face looked haggard. So she didn't stand out among the girls. Naturally, the client didn't pick her. As she followed the line away in a daze, she accidentally saw me sitting in the corner. Her eyes instantly widened, and she rushed over, grabbing my arm tightly. "Hubby, why are you here? Did you come to save me? Hubby, take me home." Okay. I should just repeat these words mechanically until the manager pulled her away. The customers thought it was quite bad luck, but for my sake. They didn't say much. When I saw Aisha again, my heart didn't fluctuate much. Even if she had fallen into this situation, it was also her own fault. She chose her own path and walked by herself. After the social gathering, my girlfriend waited for me outside the door. Unexpectedly, Aisha was waiting at the door. Aisha saw me and my girlfriend embracing and rushed over with an emotional outburst. I hurriedly held my girlfriend in my arms, blocked Aisha with my body. And looked at her wearily. Aisha's face was full of tears, and she looked very aggrieved. Is it because of her? You don't want me. I suddenly felt a headache. Don't think of yourself as the heroine of a bitter drama. Okay. You cheated on me and gave birth to someone else's child. We got divorced a long time ago. Hearing my words, Aisha was very resistant. I won't listen. I won't listen. I won't listen. You can only be with me, or no one can have you. After saying that, she actually pulled out a pair of scissors and viciously stabbed me in the abdomen. I watched my blood slowly flow out as my girlfriend screamed and rushed over. I wanted to wave my hand to tell her not to come over. It was dangerous, but I couldn't make a sound. The hot people around me quickly subdued Aisha, and I fell to the ground. Aisha's scissors nearly killed me. I wasn't sure why Elsa was so crazy. The police department revealed that she was high on drugs. As soon as Elsa left, 
she went straight to New York City and started working as a prostitute. Slowly, she became addicted to drugs and was often confused about what was real and what wasn't. When she met me this time, our roles were completely reversed. The loser she used to despise has now become a big boss, while she herself has been reduced to that state. She was devastated and waited for me at the door. Then she saw another woman beside me and lost control of her emotions and picked up the scissors. Fortunately, I was lucky to escape with my life, and thanks to my girlfriend for stopping the bleeding in time. Not long after I was discharged from the hospital, I got engaged to my girlfriend. Ah, with a flourishing career and a beautiful woman, I can say that I am living a happy life. Thinking back to my own downtrodden look a few years ago, I can't help but smile down. What are you laughing at, my dear? The call of my lover brought me back to reality. I gently took her in my arms, my chin resting lightly on top of her head, laughing at the fact that you are here and everything is so beautiful.